The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too And welcome to my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middleest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm that sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Just want to do a, uh, a quick review. First off, congratulations to our friend, the person we, I feel like we inspire every day, uh, Lim Marl Miranda. He was on uh, Saturday Night Live, and uh, I was just thinking we could talk about some of the best goofs, I mean, here's the thing. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a friend, and... An inspiree by us. And so yeah. there's, I feel like, but if we're like, going to like review it. Like a co-inspirator, I would say. If we're, if we're reviewing the product, I'm, I've got to be impartial. I've got to be ethical about it. It should be easy to be impartial uh, because we are recording this Saturday afternoon long before the episode has aired. So I feel like that will make it really easy yeah. to be impartial. To, to remain impartial as far as judging the episode goes. I feel like... We don't go into his house yes. and write musicals. You know what I mean? But he's coming into Goof Tavern. He's drinking our Goof Ale. He's maybe eating up all the Goof pretzels on the counter, leaving none for anyone else. Well, what were what were some of your guys' favorite sketches that um, Lynn did? Because I got to tell you, when he brought back that classic Chris Kattan character, M- Mango... And I it was could like, not believe he dropped I, Mango on us. He did that. He did Wayne's I World. Thought, I thought Mango was actually as a tribute to me. I was really touched. In fact, I what? I wept a little bit. What, what I didn't like very much is how they had Chris Kattan in old age makeup. And he came back as like an elderly Mango. Yes. And Lynn was like, new Mango? I really didn't understand why that was necessary. <laughs> Justin, I don't want to disillusion you. We haven't seen Chris Kattan in a while. I'm not certain that was makeup. Okay. I... I I didn't like the part where old Mango and Lynn as young Mango fought each other. Yeah. But yeah. because like it, what got weird is that like it seemed like it was not scripted to be like that. And it was just like our friend Lynn Manuel Miranda was having a very real, very live fight with Chris Kattan on the stage with real punches and blows. And it was like, is this supposed to be happening right now? <laughs> Are we supposed to be watching this? Because there was a point where Chris Kattan was just screaming, how could you do this to me, Lynn? Uh-huh. This was mine. This was, this mine. was my no, baby. Man. You took yeah. this from me, Lynn. I do mango, he said over and he over just again. He screaming, <laughs> I do mango. I am mango. Let me pivot just real quick. I got to bring it up. Coneheads. Oh, boy. Coneheads not see, great. Did not see that coming. So oh, the funny. fact that they, they combined the Coneheads with the Spartan cheerleaders, which honestly was a strange brilliant. one. I, I thought I it was brilliant. I get it. I get what they're. It's. I think it's about like the current political climate was kind of what they were satirizing there. And yes. I thought it was great. I didn't understand why he came out as Cube Boy during the mm-hmm. Conehead set. Like, and again, yeah. it was one of those things where like all of the actors on stage just stopped and they're like, "Lynn, what are you doing? Why are you trying to yeah. create this new character, Cube Boy? This is not how we did it in dress rehearsals." And like, Lynn's thing was definitely funnier, but it was just again, just kind of a weird energy. One thing that was weird to me was also yeah. that he brought Fire Marshal Bill back. Yeah, like that's a that's a Mad TV character. That was that Mad James TV. He did. Yeah, and I don't even know why he would be Fire Marshal. He called it Bob. And like, I don't know if he forgot what he was originally called or what, but he did the whole like, let me try to get something like that whole thing. Yeah. Like he did that character. You know what, Justin, now that you mention it, <laughs> I also thought it was weird when he came on as Bag and Sag and Barry from Keenan all that yeah. Yeah. character from all that. That was yeah, really and weird. Sh- why did he make Keenan stand outside a window on and the watch. set and watch the yeah. whole scene? That was so strange. I thought it was and- weird when... They just sort of stopped, and then Lynn did a scene, word for word, from Martin, where he mm-hmm. played every role in the TV show Martin. <laughs> so I remember weird. that. 
And it was I like, is this, is this even Saturday Night Live anymore? Like, what's it, it was like a multimedia <laughs> experience. And don't get me wrong, I loved it. A plus, like, yes, absolutely, is amazing. But it was like, it doesn't seem like he told anybody he was going to do it. Remember how they got the motorized armchair from the dad from Roundhouse, and mm-hmm. Lynn drove it around on stage for twenty minutes yeah. in silence, and he just kept saying, "Look at me." Don't look, look away. Me. Just Don't watch look it. Away. I do think he brought it home when he uh, brought out the the record player and he lip synced to Mighty Mouse, but he just did the part. Here I come to save the day, yeah, and I, that whole... was so unique and new, and like no one's ever done anything like that before. It was a really good episode, though. Like, it was, I thought it was so it was good. good. You know who was great? You know who I really liked was twenty five pilots. No, they lost pilots? four. They lost no. four. They're down to twenty one. Damn. I know, it's a real shame. But you know, in this economy, you just can't afford all those pilots. Back in my day, you could smoke on a plane while 21 pilots had to watch you. And what are they doing? There were 21 joysticks on the plane. What are you doing? You could get 25 pilots for a nickel. Yeah. And movies were better. This is an advice show, really. If you think about it. If you think about it, this is an advice show. We don't need to advise Lynn. He already just like crushed it. Uh, on on Snell, so I'm I'm ready to just do our thing now. Yeah, let's get wild. Let's do it. Let's 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 really get back in our wheelhouse. We're back. I love my big brother to death. Oh no! Whoa, that was a weird accent. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I love my big brother to death. We're very good friends and often go to social gatherings together. He's probably the nicest guy I know, which is generally a good thing, but has some unfortunate side effects. He sometimes takes up to 30 to 40 minutes to leave a place because he has to say individual and personalized goodbyes to everyone, which leaves me waiting by the door awkwardly more times than I'd like to admit. Although I know it comes from a very good place. I'm pretty irritated by this. Am I good? Should I say something? If I do, how do I do it without hurting his feelings? That's from Tardy and Tired in Tel Aviv. Oh, That's that's a a really good one. Um, This is, you shouldn't. You can't change your brother. You can change your travel arrangements to things. And that's I think that's what you got to do. Because I love this person. Makes me feel so special. Oh, sure. I, the, friend, the friend that, like, when they take... When I take off, my move is I thank whoever hosted the party and anybody I see on my way to the door. And then I turn and I say, bye, everybody. See you later. And I walk out and do, like, a quick little shout, shout cast. And then I scoot, scoot my way on out. Because I also don't want to take 40 minutes to leave. See, my um, move, I just bounce like a gummy bear. I just sit there and I think like, oh, I'm done. And I walk out the door. Well, that's, Because oftentimes that's just how impulsive I am. You know, that's the energy I bring to a party. You know, yes. like I'm sitting there having a great time in mid-sentence. It just clicks on my head like my time here is done. And I just walk out the front door. Yeah, it's very random. Like sometimes I'll be talking to you and you'll just start screaming and and trying to kick me. And it's like, yep. what? And it's like, I love that random energy that Travis and brings. And I'm, then I'm running out the door. And I'm I on liked, to the next adventure. I really liked at my wedding when you just mm-hmm. weren't there anymore. And it was like, yep. well, how random. How funny. What would you guys think if he, if you just showed up 30 to 40 minutes later than your brother? So what I'm suggesting here is if you show up later, then oh, I get you'll you. be ready to go at the exact moment that he is. You know I mean, what I mean, maybe he's maybe he's like, my, I love my brother, but he always shows up 30 to 40 minutes too early mm-hmm. to every social gathering. Like, it, I'm saying if you came later, maybe it would balance out. You'd be on the same schedule. Or you could just like look at your brother and say, hey, in 30 or 40 minutes, I'm going to be ready to leave. So start doing the goodbyes now. I, I will also say that mm-hmm. I appreciate your concern, but I doubt very much that if you said, I doubt your brother is unaware of the fact that you are often waiting by the door as he says his goodbyes. Like, I think that's probably something, if this has happened more than twice, he's probably picked up on the fact, but he just sees it as like, I love my brother, but why is he so rude and doesn't say goodbye to anybody? That's that's the real stitch, isn't it? Is that your brother's doing these beautiful goodbyes, never mm-hmm. leaves a party without putting some tears in individual. those eyeballs. Yeah, um, and you aren't doing that unless you are just sort of catching his, unless you're drafting, as they say in racing terms, terminology um you're probably not doing that so you just sit there and wait for your brother to say all the goodbyes and then you probably do what i do which is the shout blast um and then you seem probably like a dick and so like i know Derek so well his brother jason i don't know him from adam his other Mm -hmm. brother 
Who's also very friendly. Who's also extremely friendly. It's just fuck Jason. Really. So I'm saying, like, let your brother know, because maybe you can meet in the middle somewhere and arrange it more of like, hey, I'm going to be ready to go in like an hour. Um, let's start making our way to the door. That kind of thing. Rather than you just like standing by the door and, you know, because here's the thing, if especially if this is a recurring thing, no matter how hard you try to hide it, you're probably reading as impatient. And so, oh, like, I, oh, and also, let me clarify something. Uh, I've been a brother for almost thirty-three years now. He is trolling you, like one hundred percent. If sure. he sees you standing by the door, he is going to make those goodbyes last as long as humanly possible. One hundred percent guaranteed. Bye, Dave. Wait, you know what, Dave? Before I go, remind me. How did we meet? What's the etymology <laughs> of the name Dave? <laughs> Hey, Dave, let's talk about some of our other famous Daves. What are some of your favorite Daves, Dave? Dave, <laughs> Dave, will you, for me, recap in synopsis the entire plot of the television show Entourage? Everyone, you, everyone, Dave. gather around. Dave is going to regale us with the plot... Uh, plot the plantourage. You know, the, the plot of Entourage. Um, Sit down, Jason. Listen to Dave. Dave, I mean, what's your favorite epic poem? <laughs> Remember the other day when you were recounting Gilgamesh for me, Dave? Do it once more. Dave, sit with me and read all of the menu items and calorie counts for every item at Taco Bell. Mm. This is the problem. This is why we shouldn't have parties anymore. Parties made sense in agrarian societies because at some point everybody would be like, fuck, I gotta wake up early to farm. I can't be here anymore. Everybody agree on the time. The, the, the first time there was an invitation printed with a question mark on it, we should have retired parties. Yeah. Because we need agrarian responsibilities to be able to get us out of parties. Unless you have agrarian responsibilities, you are not going to be able to leave any party. This is actually my- why I super love being in my 30s now. Because I like, Teresa and I get so excited when a party starts at like 2 p.m. When it's like, ah, uh, shit, yeah, it's in between lunch and dinner, and it will be done by six. This is awesome. God, I don't know ever when I turn thirty. I love it when it just gets lit. I'm gonna nope. go sun up, sun down. I'll raise a, I'll raise a fucking bar for sixteen hours. I don't give a shit. Um, um, my the amount of predicted discomfort required for me to insist that I drive separately to an event is so small, so minor, so insignificant. Ah, oh, man, I really want to be home by 10. Oh, well, I was thinking about staying out till about 10, 15. Ooh, sounds like we should drive separate then, because <laughs> I, I got to, let's drive, and uh, it's 100 miles, and it'll take us, you know, two hours to get there, um, but I am going to stop at one gas station on the way. Ooh, I don't know about that. I should probably <laughs> drive separate. <laughs> um, do you guys want a Yahoo? Yeah, sure. How about this one from Level 9000, Yadru, Drew, Drew, Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's by Yadru Answers user. Question mark? Who asks? Why can't joggers run around in a circle? Why do they have to run where they can pose and flex in front of everyone? (laughs) As an extremely... What? Why can't joggers run around in a circle? Why do they have to run where they can pose and flex in front of everyone? As an extremely lazy person, I would rather not see someone else getting fit. I really don't need any more guilt. Okay, wait, hold on. There's an inherent... Why can't they just run in a small circle in their front yard? (laughs) I am an... I, Travis McElroy, am an extremely lazy person. I rarely find as, joggers As evidenced come, by your pronunciation of every word in that sentence. Lazy person. I rarely find joggers coming to me. Yeah. Like, I rarely am forced to look at joggers from inside my home. So is this lazy person, like, going to the park, and then they're like, what's the deal with all these joggers? I just came here to be lazy. I, t- I tell you what I hate, though, is when, they, when you do encounter one, and then they stop, and they turn towards you. <laughs> Just glistening, and they're just like, oh, yes, it's me. Can you believe it? It's me. Oh. (laughs) Drink it in. Drink me up. Mm, It's me. Wonderful. How How wonderful you've seen me. Mm. Mm. Remember this. Um, Tell your grandchildren's children about the day that you met me. It's why I can't go to the gym. It's because it's too loud in there. Just everybody's just like, me, yes, me, yes. How long would you be able to run in a circle in your front yard and 
not get arrested. Because I feel like yes. if you did it for more than 15 minutes, the police would come and say, I don't know why, but we're pretty sure we have to arrest you. This Just, is untenable. If I ran around in a circle for 15 seconds in my front yard, the police would have to arrest me for projectile vomiting. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, we're arresting you for attempted Thank suicide. Thank you. Save me from myself. This is this is good f- fitness, though, right? Just mm-hmm. do it in a circle. Why not? Because oh, it would get too tiring. Yeah, dog. Exercise. Well, the real worry is that what ends up happening is just like mm-hmm. in uh, DuckTales. If you go in a circle too many times, you're going to wear a circle into the ground. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? What the fuck yeah. are you talking about? That makes perfect sense. He, if you run in a circle for a long t- think about it, Griffin. Like, really think for once. Just if you run in once. a circle in your yard for a very long time, eventually you're going to start to dig a ditch, a circle shaped ditch. The first, the grass will die. Very embarrassing. Crop mm-hmm. circles in my yard? No, thank you. And then after the grass is dead, you're just going to start digging down in the dirt. And eventually you'll have a very ugly, irredeemable circle from jogging in your yard. Exactly. I'm sorry, guys. On this Yahoo page, there's an ad that says Melissa McCarthy says her goodbyes at 45. No, it's not. She didn't. Why are you an ad on Yahoo Answers right now? Why, why would she say her I goodbyes? I clicked through and it's a, a, E Online. Hey, E Online. Why are you? Why? Okay. Does it mean something different? I saw it. We were having a good time. Well, she this was podcast. leaving a party. And it took a long time. <laughs> We're having a good time recording this podcast, and my eyes dart to the right on the Yahoo Answers page, and it's like, yo, Melissa McCarthy died. And it's like, what? Click it. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks for reading E! Online. This is an advertisement. Stupid. She's fine. So, she's Melissa fine. McCarthy no, she's okay? good. No, she's good. I haven't told anybody this story. I've certainly never said it on the air, because she. what if she listens? And I don't know. This story is not about Melissa McCarthy. I know it's not. That, sorry, bad transition. But... One day, Rachel and I were at home. We were having dinner. We're watching Walking Dead, I think. And um, get a knock at the door, and it was a woman who was out for a run, and she looked she looked really um, bad off. And she explained that she was very, very sick, and she had just gotten very, very sick while she was out on the road. And she asked if she could use our bathroom. Um, and it, in in like the kindest act maybe we've ever done, we said, "Yeah, okay, go fuck it up." Just like I know it's gonna get really, really wild in there. And please do that because the alternative is really, I guess, horrible. And we can't let it, that happen to a fellow human being. Um, and then we had to drive her home because she was very, very sick after that. And that is like that, guys. That's why I don't want to go out jogging. I'll jog in a circle in my front yard because then if I if I get hit and my dookie box just gets really, really crazy, then I have <laughs> like I know I know exactly where to go. What if I get lost out there and it gets wild in my dookie box because I I don't know. Ate, ate a weird salad yesterday or something. See, this is I why did. this is why there should be on like people's front porches, like on columns or something, some kind of marking to let you know that that's a safe house to use the bathroom at if you're out jogging and you have yeah. an emergency. Yeah. Jogger is welcome to wreck our shop. Come yeah. on in. Also, she like did, they'll it, give you a plate of biscuits for painting the fence, that kind of thing. I do want to say I, it was not that bad. I could. I got, I'm glad it wasn't that bad. I I uh I will admit to uh I I started jogging a couple months ago and but but I've mainly just been jogging in the neighborhood around my house, and I started doing at the park just for a change of scenery, and this is very embarrassing. I had a moment when I was basically halfway around the track from my car, and I had this little bit of panic where I thought if I get tired of running. I don't have a way back to my car other than that. Like the decision to stop perambulating Mm -hmm. has been robbed from me because I will have to do that to get back to my car. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I I know exactly what you mean, Justin. I, when I still lived in Los Angeles, I went down to Venice beach and I walked the dog along the Venice beach boardwalk and I walked for a mile and I was very proud of myself and then I realized that my car was still back at the other end of that yeah. mile. And I was so defeated in that moment that I thought about calling a lift to take me back to my car. <laughs> I, I didn't. You don't psychically prepare for that. Like, nah, you, know, you got to be ready. ready. I'm in desperate need of some advice. I was helping lift a table at the office and I ripped a hole in my suit pants from zipper to top of belt. Wait, what? Wait, what? From zipper to top of belt? 
Oh, okay, probably from, from the like bottom, bottom of, of zipper. Bottom yeah. of zipper to top of belt on the back. Oh my god. That's quite a rip. I've been sitting here for some time at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> what are my next steps, brothers? And that's from Assless Slacks. This probably oh, came no. in a few days ago, right? So like it has been <laughs> some time. I hope they got someone bringing him water and stuff. Well, in I mean, it's a real term, 127 hour situation. <laughs> in the short term, you're going to have to be the last one in the office. Yes. Like, people are going to have to look at you and be like, hey, oh, we're, and you're like, yeah, just trying to figure out, finish up the big Robertson report. <laughs> just, hey, we're working hard or hardly working. Bill, Bill, p- please. <laughs> please go. Please just go, Bill. I'm having kind of a late one, too. Got a big project. Thought I might stay here all weekend. Bill. Bill, please, God. Please. I'm begging you just this once, Bill. Work you know what? Home. Let's make this an all-nighter. Just you and I, huh? We'll work on projects together. Maybe order some pizzas. Crack open some beers after everyone's hey, gone. How's it sound? You know how you've been talking about how you want to start playing D&D? Well, I, let's do it. I've got some D20s. Let's go. First off, stand, first off stand up for me. B- B- Bill, what? Stand up for me right now in front of everyone. <laughs> Bill, no, I don't. I don't want to stand. And take a bow. No, no, Bill, please don't make me do this. Uh, do I'm me a calling favor, just, in my favor. Do me a favor and uh, just to uh, stand up and spread your butt cheeks out, Bill. No, it shouldn't be a problem if your pants are good. <laughs> Bill, how? <laughs> Bill, why? Bill, why? Part the cheeks, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you remember that one time that you ate my sandwich? I don't know what you're talking about, Bill. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Stand up. Let's see that cheek. Stand up. Um, this hey, is guys, check this out. Okay. Bomb threat. No, don't. No, 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 no. No. That's, that's an FBI crime, the big one. Mm, okay, that's not going to work. Uh, first of all, Staples, I think, can do this. Oh, but you're going to have to be so careful. You have to take the pants off first. Wait, so wait, you take your pants to Staples and you, and then what? Just say like, hey, listen, I need new pants. Listen, Staples is the number one office solution. I think if you go in the door and your asshole's showing. There's an showing, office and you need a solution. Right. Your asshole's showing in the office. You're like, yo, dog, this is now this is in, now it's in your court. Fix this. We've got another one. Debbie, give the emergency kit. I'm just this saying is, that Staples probably takes care of this all the time. Yes. Call this, Papa John's. Call Papa John's oh, and say, I need a hot and fresh pizza delivery, a medium mente. And then as soon as the pizza gets there, they stretch it out on the table, the one pizza table, and they put out all the pizza and everybody's like, oh, grub time. When everybody gets up to grub, you make your exit. Hello. Perfect plan. Except for one thing, Justin. There's hmm. no flaws. There's no Bill logic. Try. Travis, whatever you say is going to be a fucking lie. So, but go ahead. Bill's on a diet. Damn it, that's actually foolproof. Damn, that's very good. Mm-hmm. Bill's getting that gluten-free. He mm. brought a salad from home. He ate it at 11.30 because he got hungry. Damn, what if you just... Hey, what if you just fucking own it? <laughs> yeah, go to the, walk into the boss's office like, hey, I want a raise. And before you say anything, check out this, this hole. <laughs> I want to raise. No buts about it. And then your and butt's then, like, there. Show him your butthole. Set, set your pants on fire. It's, Listen, yeah. If you do that, everybody will be like very moved by your plight, and everybody mm. will be very worried about you. You have to very quickly get the pant fire under control, and I'm seriously, you probably shouldn't even let it get out of control. Mm-hmm. It should be a very isolated, controlled burn of your pants, and in the side. That's good, I guess Justin. You don't not That's good the because then your pants will grow back stronger and lusher than ever. <laughs> this is a fun little farce that you've put together. A fun little Family Matters-esque romp that you've you've built. Maybe get your stuff. pants stuck in the shredder. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not bad. What I'm saying is if you set your pants on fire and then can get them out, no one's going to question next steps. I think you're going home. Like You, t- you get the rest of the day off. You're going to have to just, figure out a way to get someone stodgier than you for their pants to rip. Just be grateful that it ripped the way it did and you didn't get you didn't get the the Kravitz gap. You didn't you get didn't a full get, blown Kravitz. You didn't get a full full blown full blown Lenny Kravitz fault line situation. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Another one? Sure, yeah. This one was sent in by Aaron Keese. The Keys blade. Keys. Nope. You've tried that one before. And it's, it's oh, a, I have. Here are the keys of the kingdom. 
The keys to the city. Here's the keys. Thank you, Aaron. It's by Yahoo Answers user Wesley, who asks, how to make your parents think you found a lizard even though you bought it online? <laughs> um, I, there's so well, many... There's a lot of answers here, and I'd like to just read a couple just to like sort of set a tone, uh, because the top answer is, there's no point in lying. Just tell them the truth. Otherwise, the consequences will be much worse. At worst, if you manage to tell them it's a lizard you found outside and they didn't want a lizard in the house, they'll make you release it. That's not a bad point. Like I think, oh, I, I think you could just say, I bought this lizard, so it lives here now. <laughs> They can't just be like, well, no, make it, put it outside where it doesn't belong. Yeah, where are these parents that would be upset if you bought a lizard, but if you just, like, found a trash lizard outside, they'd be like, oh, dunk, I guess it's fate. You're like, gonna have to say you rescued the lizard from an owner that was maybe terrible. Some kind of elaborate, like, lizard heist to get a lizard out of a bad situation. This is not it, a bad idea. I tell you, though, when my when my boy, he's going to be a real scamp, I know it. When he brings a lizard into this home, if he says, I found this trash lizard outside and it's a bad, dirty lizard, and it's gross because it lived in the dirt for a long time and now it lives in the house and it's going to bring dirt into the house and be awful, I will say, no, that's no, that's no good. If my little scamp boy says, um, I bought this lizard on amazon and it was four and a half stars and it was amazon prime so it was free shipping i'd be like hell yes sick purchase what's <laughs> what's the lizard's what's the lizard's name beautiful beautiful lizard excellent i can see why it's so highly rated this is an excellent excellent lizard how long after clicking confirm purchase do you think that this person posted this on yahoo answers <laughs> like oh shit um oh that's right <laughs> okay um, but okay, let's help this person. I guess plan an inverse heist. You well, gotta gonna make have the... to do. Okay, you're gonna have to tell your parents you found the lizard in the house, and then mm. maybe you can oh. angle like it would never survive outside. This is a house lizard, and you know what? Maybe it was here before us. Maybe it found us in its house. That's a power play. But if you can make Ooh. it work, what? Okay, I... how about this? How about you? Find a bear, okay? <laughs> oh my god! And okay. kill it, and kill the bear, no. and put it in the living room. Listen, okay. hear me out. Kill the bear. Mm -hmm. Put the bear in the living room. Put the lizard on top of the bear, and put a little bear blood around its mouth. Okay, and then calling your parents really quickly, like, "Oh my god, guys, quick, here a lizard." Yes, we saved us. <laughs> we, we got a hero on our hands, everybody. Quick, get in here and see this heroic lizard. This is, this is. I mean, it has to be something like this where you have to make the parents fall in love with the lizard and make it seem like you had nothing to do with the lizard's arrival. So, like, I'm imagining, oh, I've got it. What if the lizard, you put the lizard in, like, their bedroom um, and they walk in and they're like, ah, a lizard. But then they look up and what do they see? It's a lizard web. And in it, it says, like, Dan's new best friend. Some oh, lizard. Good. And it's like a beautiful glistening web. And maybe there's a diamond necklace hanging from the web. And, and the lizard winks. Perfect. Could you this try to convince them that it is a reincarnated deceased family member? Hmm. Could you try to ask it things that only Unky Phil would know? And just just trivia about Unky Phil. Put it in some of his favorite shirts. That kind of thing. So it could be like, uh, if this is Unky Phil, not Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but Unky Phil, a wholly different uh, uh, entity, uh, then what I want you to do, Lizard, is stand really still for a long time and then just like dart somewhere all crazy-like and kind of, kind of scary. Oh, he did it. Oh, he, did it. he darted just like Unky Phil used to dart. He sat very still for a long time, though, and was very boring and a bad pet also. Also not a great pet. Where are you buying lizards online and getting them shipped to your home? How is that a service that's uh, being offered? That's I'm a good gonna, question, actually. I have a solution. This is good. This is, I think this could work. What you're going to need to do is you're going to, like, whatever your surreptitious ordering is, you're going to have to order all the stuff for the lizard, too. You know, the terrarium, the equipment, all that stuff. And then you're just going to have to put the lizard in your room, in that terrarium. Don't hide it. And then your parents will, at some point, walk by the room and go, when did you get a lizard? And you're going to say, what do you mean? I've had that lizard forever, for like oh, years. Nice. 
And then if your parents continue to confront you about it, now you turn it on them and say, do you not take any interest in my life whatsoever? Has it really wow. taken you this long to Ooh. figure out I have a lizard? And now they're guilty and they'll buy you a second lizard. <laughs> to wow. put on top of that one. Yes, so that your lizard need not be lonely. Um, it's going to make a Rango joke, but there's just nothing there. Maybe it's make your parents there. watch Rango, have them fall in love with lizards like you have. <laughs> How to make your parents think you found a DVD of Rango, even though you bought Rango <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah, I just found it. It's floating in the creek. Oh, no, it's, it might be it. a haunted Rango. Don't watch that. Seven <laughs> days later, Rango will actually come to your house. Hi, Rango. I love you, the Rango. Much. I've met the hardest kind of person to connect with is a person that has just bought a lizard online that has not yet arrived. Because you know there's nothing they're going to want to talk about other than the fact that they've got a lizard on the way yes. and making some plans for that lizard. There will also be no getting them out of the house lest they miss the delivery. That's a good point. That's actually a very sincere problem because I don't think lizard care is high on UPS standard uh, practices. Um, Yeah, I mean, the plans that you're going to be talking about when waiting for your lizard delivery is, I mean, just one plan, and it is a lizard funeral because that's that can't, that won't survive that. There's no way. There Unless isn't it's being a way. Hand delivered by a guy from the lizard store. That, that's the only other way. Because, like, otherwise, if, if this thing's going through FedEx, first of all, I don't want it to touch all of the other packages in FedEx. Sorry, guys, we had to return everything to sender because it might have gotten touched by a lizard. So throw it, throw it right in the garbage when it gets back. Not only that, when the lizard store ships it to you, they don't know what kind of wonderful twists and turns the package is going to take on its way. And so it's like, okay, we need to put eleven crickets in here or whatever the fuck. It's not a good idea. Don't order lizards, folks. Don't order a lizard. There's plenty of farm fresh lizards just waiting to be adopted. Let's go to the money zone. And buy our own lizards. Hell yes. You know, I had two lizards growing up, and for the life of me, I can't remember how I got them. You did or have what? two lizards. Yeah. Or where did they go? I don't I, well, that. I mean, they eventually died, but I had them for like four years. Of lizarditis. And I think that some kid just like gave me a shoebox. He was like, hey, do you want these lizards? And I was like, yeah. And as a credit to mom and dad, they were like, I guess, I guess we're just a family that has lizards now. In fairness, they thought you'd kill them much, much quicker. That is true. I don't think they anticipated having to deal with the idea of having lizards for quite so long. So you were in middle school, right? I believe so, yes. So they were probably named Xanth and... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Actually, that's quite possible, Griffin. Hey, guys, tell me about Trunk Club. Uh, Trunk Club is a service uh, which will... You're going to get a personal stylist, right? Let me walk you through it. In a personal stylist. What's their name? Dermbum. And take it, you take it again. Kronslum. Take a third... <laughs> French allure. Take a fourth. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Pinsky. Okay. That's the best one Dan. yet. Dan. <laughs> Pinsky Dan. So you're going to get a call from a stylist and you're going to. Oh, this is Pinsky Dan. <laughs> what kind of pants do you like? <laughs> Crumb floor. Do we have slacks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're going to get a call from a stylist. They're going to ask you what size everything is <laughs> down there. Up and, there. and the deal. <laughs> oh, thing. Excellent. And excellent. Crompsler, you'll never believe what he said about the dick. <laughs> what's your measurement? Like, what's your measurement around the town? <laughs> you're get all kinds of measurements to them, both real and fictional. And they're going to send you some garments that you are going to love. They're going to ask you, what are you, what are you doing out in the town? What professional, casual, fun, flirty? What's your look? They're gonna, gonna ask you your you loin weight. <laughs> They're gonna send you a box of clothes, and you're gonna try them on. And the stuff you like, you keep. The stuff you don't like, you ship right back to them in the aforementioned titular trunk. And here's the so, thing: if you live in Dallas, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, DC, or Charleston, you can just like stop by one of their like clubhouses and try stuff on and get pampered and feel real cool and you don't have to wait for them to ship stuff to you if you're not in there though you uh you can get started today at trunkclub.com slash my brother 
Uh, this isn't a subscription service. You get clothes whenever you like them from your personal stylist, and then you take five do- days to try everything on. Returns are always free. It could not be less stressful. Um, th- this is shopping without having to leave your home. So go to uh, trunkclub.com slash my brother and give it a shot today. That's trunkclub.com slash my brother. I would like to tell you about bowl and branch. Just fucking do it then. It's a new way to sheet. Okay. That's the slogan I'm going with for this. Um, we sleep on Bowl and Branch sheets, and we also use Bowl and Branch bath towels. And they've got like a whole other slew of stuff. They got like duvet covers and blankets and that kind of thing. And it's just, and no exaggeration, the most like comfortable, softest sheets I've ever slept on, towels I've ever used. Um, when Teresa and I moved across the country, we had the sheets shipped to us so we could use them right away. And you know, it, here's the thing: they don't worry about thread count because thre- thread count is a myth. They just focus on having like a really great product and using really wonderful materials. There's no huge markup because they don't like do retail space or anything like that. You get it at the right cost uh, for the you know the right fit for you, right price, all that stuff. You can try them risk free for 30 nights. If you don't love them, send it back, get a refund, nothing to lose. Um, and uh, for right now, right now, uh, listeners of my brother, my brother, and me can get fifty dollars off of your first set of sheets by going to Bowl and Branch. That's B O L L A N D B R A N C H dot com, and use the promo code My Brother to get fifty dollars off your first set of sheets. Bowl and Branch dot com promo code My Brother. All I want to. I want to tell you about Metal Energy. That's M E C T L E Energy. I want you to visit metalenergy.com and use the coupon code my brother for 25% off your entire order. What is Metal Energy? Well, they sell energy drink mixes that cost as little as 45 cents each, and they come in flavors like sour blue raspberry, green apple, and tropical cooler. If you drink energy drinks or shots and don't buy these, then you are overpaying on the reg. That's dumb. Don't be a dumb idiot with a stupid face. I'm sorry to come at you so aggressive like this, but this is the literal ad copy, which is what you are if you don't treat your energy drink habit at metalenergy.com. You're going to drink these energy drinks. You're going to jump higher. You're going to jump more. You will be jumping more often than you do now. I've tried these. Have you? Yeah, they sent them to me too. They're they're great. They taste really good, Wonderfully. Where's mine? I didn't get any go-go juice. What the fuck? Well, you should have taken some with you when you were at the house. They know that I have my own natural energy, which is cocaine. This delicious, message delicious cocaine. <laughs> this message is for Justin, Travis, and Griffin. It's from Isaac. And Isaac asks us, how's that Honda treating you? I'm assuming he's talking about the money that he paid for this Jumbotron, and uh, to which I will say, we don't get all of that, and then we split it three ways. So I will... Buy some Arby's with it later. Thank you for the Arby's, Isaac. <laughs> I yes, appreciate thank, that. Thank you so much, Isaac, for your consideration and for not. I mean, you know, folks, I can't tell you this enough. It's your hundo. Yeah. Do whatever you want with it. You know what I mean? Um, This is a good way to do it. Just like I like th- this is essentially just like a bank transaction. Hi, everybody. Mm-hmm. Hi, Griffin, Justin and Travis. My name is Isaac. I have given you a hundred dollars. This is that is all. Well, I like this because it, it's also, it's both generosity and just a little sousant of throwing it in our face. Mm. Yeah. Like, here, take my money. How's that treat you? <laughs> I, it treats me good. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for your money. I'm Jesse Thorne, and I'm curious about Jonathan Van Ness and his show, Getting Curious. What were you most excited to learn something about? I was really excited about the Romanoffs. I was really excited. Why were you so excited about the well, Romanoffs? Well, because I've been obsessed. With, thanks for listening to the episode. I'm just kidding. Because I've been obsessed with them since I was 11 from the movie Anastasia. Jonathan, what's a baby brain? It's a brain that's finally ready to explore. Getting Curious, a show for your baby brain. Download it wherever you get podcasts. I have another question. Sorry, some prankster's leaf blowing right outside my house. And it's like, pretty good what prank. A, what a jokester. Let me look. It's Jamie Kennedy. Oh, man. Blowing my yard. So, Trav, how do you think the episode's going so far? You know, so far, so good, Justin. I want a much. Squad, sorry. Jamie no, Kennedy's just- No, I'm not going to do it when you, inter- when you set me up to be interrupted. You yeah. don't get my squad. Okay, well, let me- Griffin, how do you think the show's going for so far? Um, fuck I you. I want a much. Squad. squad. Da, 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 da. I want too much. Squad. 
Dun, 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 dun. Jack in the Box is making its first appearance here on the Munch Squad. That's amazing because uh, they sell like tacos so and spaghetti in the same box. <laughs> well, things are about to get even more confusing because today we're not the Munch Squad. We're not just the Munch Squad. We're still the Munch Squad. We're also the Brunch Squad. Oh, God. Because Jack in the Box is launching a new level of craveability with Brunchfest. Okay. Now I, I know also, what you're saying. No, Justin. fuck off. You can't just it's brunchner. It's all the meals and you get just get it shot into your face. It ain't that far off. Oh god. But but Jack of the Box has always served breakfast all day. Not only that, fucking brunch already is the words breakfast and lunch. You don't need to get a fucking reprise there at the end coming at coming at you with the epilogue. <laughs> okay, 1969 is the year. A man named Jack introduces the very first Just. breakfast sandwich. And in 2013, they introduced Jack's Munchie Meals, which was something else at late times. I'm sorry, are now, you reading? Are you? Re- is this the worst press release I've ever heard? Or are you making this <laughs> brunch up? Brunchfest, Mary. What is Brunchfest? I know you're confused. This is a first in the industry, according to the press release. A first in the industry. Brunchfest marries the unique flavors of brunch with the convenience and any time availability that guests can always expect from Jack in the Box. What? Then why? Do, I am fucking. <laughs> I am fucking furious right now. Jack's Brunchfest menu features items that make brunch an everyday occasion. What? Guests can choose from three entry entrees, including. The bacon, egg, and chicken sandwich. What you got there is a toasted English muffin with crispy chicken filet. And then it's got bacon and cheese and bacon mayo and a freshly cracked fried egg. Hey, freshly cracked is a crazy (laughs) way of just making a fried egg sound delicious. Excuse me? Yeah, freshly cracked. Mmm, good. (laughs) Very good. Good, I guess. Uh, What's the alternative? Sorry? (laughs) Yeah, we squeezed these down about a week ago. Freshly unzipped from an individual Ziploc bag. Uh, the brunch burger is a buttery croissant topped with a juicy beef patty and a freshly cracked fried egg. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So you okay, guys okay, put okay. egg on shit. I have, go ahead and read the third option and then I'm going to yell and yell and yell until I fall asleep. Well, you got a Southwest scrambler plate. That's scrambled eggs with roasted peppers, diced green chilies, pepper jack cheese, and it's served with homestyle potatoes, okay. <laughs> hickory that one, bacon or sausage, and a buttery croissant. I have excellent news for Jack in the Box. I'm giving you a one out of three. You you barely you barely skated by without getting a zero because that is brunch. What you've just described it has breakfast and lunch elements in it, and it's it to call the other when you put an egg on a burger that. It doesn't make it a breakfast time, or it's not. A, it shouldn't even be around breakfast time. It's a it's a fucking burger, and it's certainly not deserving of having the word breakfast in the name of the meal twice. At the very right. least, what you've made is Le Brunch Unch, which is double <laughs> lunch in the word, you big dumb animal. That's fair, because I don't know, I maybe there exists, but brunch is like a thing now with like a defined set of parameters. It's yes. not just putting an egg on something. No. Like you, you can't be like, I, I made a catfish and I put a f- freshly cracked egg on it. It's brunch now. You can't pour gravy on Captain Crunch and say, look, I did a brunch. You did it. You really. didn't do a brunch. What you did was a crime sin. But what does it matter to us? We are not industry professionals like uh, Iwona Alter, Jack the Box's vice president of product marketing, who says, and I quote, brunch enthusiasts no longer have to wait until the weekend to satisfy their brunch cravings. Oh, with thank brunch, God. With brunch fest, we're giving our guests 24 7 access to the distinct, craveable flavors of brunch whenever they want it and wherever the hunger strikes. Hey, you motherfuckers, if you eat brunch at any time other than brunch time, it's breakfast or lunch. It's one of the other brunch. meals. You can't have who, brunch at 7 p.m. Who are these people that are living such lives of desperation? Where they say to themselves, I would fucking kill for brunch food right now, but I don't know how to obtain it. I need someone to deliver that to me because I don't know how to get that experience at home. I need someone to save me. Justin, 
take it one step further, they're then so desperate that they're just glad there's an option like Jack in the Box to fulfill their brunch craving. That's they just need it so bad. Justin just sent a photo, and I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm you should afraid. look at it because it's insane. It looks like somebody Holy stacked shit. a meal on top of another meal. It's like, yeah, when the first time you hear the word brunch when you are a child and your brain can't understand how, like, ideas can compound into a bigger single idea and you think, like, yeah, we're going to have brunch. What does that mean? You're going to put, like, cereal on a burger? It's like, no, no, you dumb idiot. It's a whole different thing. Uh, Jack in the Box has realized that childlike vision of two, two meals that have combined in the worst possible way. It's like if you were about to sit down and, in, and enjoy a normal human breakfast and then an all-powerful toddler came into the room and said, I want to put my lunch in it. Yes. Like, just, I want to store my lunch in your breakfast. And the what thing about- What sandwiches bro- look like to me is like you wanted to make a sausage, egg, and cheese, and bacon sandwich, but you ran out of sausage. So you just like grabbed a frozen hamburger patty and you were like, now I'm a- great yes. chef and I've invented a new food. This is food that a very drunk person makes at 1 a.m. If, if anything, it's dinner fist, a combination of dinner and then wrapping all around, well, all the way around to breakfast. This is this is fourth meal, which is already another this thing. Is, no, this is fifth meal, Griffin. This, this is, is fifth something, meal. This is something you have at four o'clock in the morning and you don't remember you had it's, and you eat breakfast again. This is last meal. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> This is not, this is not, this is not the action of a person who continues their existence. This is not a meal you eat on purpose. Brunch, brunch, there is no such thing as brunch food, right? There are things that you eat at brunch, but you could also just eat that stuff at lunch or breakfast. The reason brunch exists is because people like to have mimosas and they like to have a good excuse for it. If you are eating, you shouldn't eat brunch on a weekday. You shouldn't. I don't think you should be eating lunch on a, a brunch on a weekday. It doesn't make sense. You should have no. other. You should be doing something else at eleven a.m. Brunch is a brunch is a way of telling your body, like, listen, you need a little extra sleep. Here, here, big fella, let me put you back down. Yeah. Here, have a ha, let me fill you up with 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 a food, and now I'm going to put some mimosas in you. Oh, look in that warm sun, in that nice. Oh, that hammock looks inviting. Boom, you're out. You're See done. See you on That's Monday. Justin. These are not the actions. That's not a midday break. You can't recover from brunch I, and go back to work. I spent so much time looking at this picture you sent, looking at the bad food on it. And I just looked at the top part of it where it has the word brunch fist written out. And I'm just fucking angry again. Because who the, who the fuck do you think you are? It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But it's craveable, and it's twenty. No, it's not even a little bit craveable. It's highly craveable. They wouldn't lie. They can't lie about it. I'm gonna. There's a Jack in the Box around the corner. It is sadly the like nearest fast food place to me. Sometimes when I'm desperate, I'll go there and get one of their fajita wraps or whatever. It's okay. I want to go and I want to buy these, and then I want to take the cashier with me, who hands me the things, and go with them into the bathroom and make him watch me put it in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm i'm a little i mean maybe i just feel differently about this because i don't have a jack-in-the-box anywhere near me so maybe it like mm, exotic fruits fruit. yeah. yeah i can't i'd have to go to cincinnati i think to get into one i have a yahoo here can i read it yeah please it was sent in by uh game recognized game rachel rosing thank you rachel it's by yahoo answers user it's just guys the name is just smoke weed cool they say Can't get into TV series slash movies because I know they are just acting. Anytime I watch an interesting TV series, I may get into it for about a couple of minutes before the thought of them just memorizing some script and standing in front of a camera pops into my head, especially during those scenes where a character is not supposed to know uh, the other character stole something of theirs or something like that, and they act like they don't know. But since they are acting, they really do. Is anyone else like this? Is there any way to avoid this? Well, now I am. Damn it. I you get, poisoned the well. Everybody was talking like, oh, you got to watch Westworld. Westworld's so tight. You got to watch it. And I was like, I turned it on. And I watched it. And for a few minutes, I was like, okay, okay, okay. But then after a while, I was just like, it's just Anthony Hopkins. That's just, <laughs> that's just Anthony Hopkins. Nice he try. Like, and he's, somebody's like, the robots are getting all shitty out there. And, 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 and he was like, oh, no, I can't believe it. And it's like. You did know it, Anthony. You read the script for this, I bet. 
<laughs> Not only that, it's one step further for me, Griffin, because I look and I see and it's Anthony Hopkins acting on the screen. But then I think, you know, like 10 feet right in front of Anthony Hopkins, just behind the camera, there's some dude like eating a bagel at craft services. Yeah. They're not in Westworld at all. No, they're not. They're just, they're just, they're just in some building where they make TV shows. If and like not- upstairs from that, there's a guy taking a 10 too. And yeah. he had a bagel sandwich mm-hmm. earlier. And then, like, down the hall from that, there's just, like, a woman, like, just doing the accounting for the show. Yeah. I wish I was a director of Westworld, because I would love to, like, yell cut after Anthony Hopkins Fish is acting. It just would be like, mm, good acting. <laughs> <laughs> like, just really <laughs> tell him, like, man, that you acted so good in that one. I thought you were that person for like a second. Well, yes, thank you. I, but but no, then I but did. Like, but then I didn't, of course, because you're Anthony Hopkins and you're just <laughs> I reading. Wasn't fooled. But like Anthony, Sir Anthony, that was pretty good acting. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, lay it out there. Thank you for doing that so good on my TV show. It 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 it, it, it this is now an all encompassing thing for me. I watch the the new Mission Impossible, and I watch it, and I'm not I'm not enthrilled by like a story of spy work and intrigue i'm just thinking like this seems dangerous for tom i don't want tom to be doing this i want to see him in the cocktails too i don't want that's him to that's actually be a fair point because tom does a lot of his own tom stuff does most of his own stuff fans. and it's like I don't, I don't i can't even watch a jackie chan movie anymore because it's like i'm cool cop cool two and i have a magic tuxedo and it's like you're not your jackie chan and please you're like 60 don't please don't hurt you're so brutal don't you know i i watched the new star trek movie and i just thought the whole time they're not even in space this isn't real. They don't have laser guns. And I screamed that the whole time I was asked to leave. That's uh, why you're gonna you're all really gonna like the My Brother, My Brother Me show. Cause everything that happened on it happened. Yeah. Like it all happened. It's, it's real. All real. It's realer than like any reality TV show that's ever been. Cause I was there for all of it and it all happened. Yeah. Guys, no movie magic. Guys, I'm on Yahoo. Different ad. McCarthy's gone. The real reason Mike and Molly was canceled. And then a picture of Mike and Molly. What the fuck's it? Click through. It's E! Online again. Same thing. What the fuck are you guys? What's your ad campaign? About the death of Melissa McCarthy. Because it sucks. <laughs> it is a different, discreet, dead Melissa McCarthy ad. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why does you? E! Online hate Melissa McCarthy so and why, much? And why is Yahoo like, mm, another good ad? Bring them on in. Melissa well, McCarthy's Griffin, what mom kind of cookies? is on Yahoo. Melissa McCarthy's mom is on Yahoo. How do you think that feels for her? She's just trying to figure out like how to get a frog out of her butt or whatever people on Yahoo Answers are doing. <laughs> and she, she sees that her daughter died? Yeah. Griffin, what kind of things have you been searching? What kind of cookies do you have that like That's the algorithms just the are usual, like? Just like the usual, usual stuff. Like the cast of Mike and Molly, comma, butt dead. Oh, uh, that was... <laughs> what the fuck, dog? <laughs> Well, um, I bet if you buy a lizard on Amazon, your cookies are irredeemable. Yeah. They're not going to know what to do with those cookies. Yeah, for sure. Um, I can't. I can't what? watch Mike and Molly because it's like <laughs> these two people are in love, but I can't because they aren't because it's Melissa McCarthy and whoever is Mike, whoever Mike is, and they're not. What I, I know like they're to, not. What I like to do. He's, I like to suspend my disbelief so very hard that then I start to worry that the show will come to a crashing halt when they realize someone has planted a camera in their kitchen to watch them like have hilarious banter. Oh, shit. And they'll see the camera and become horrified like someone's been watching us the whole time, Debra. And oh it would go God. like it would get so terrifyingly real. What if in the last season of Mike and Molly they realized it was a TV show? And that their lives were a TV show, and the whole last season Fuck, that's was just good. about them like running and showing the yes. whole thing out. God, that's fucking Fuck, good, please. Yes. I've never wanted to watch Mike and Molly even with one percent of my being. But Melissa um, McCarthy has the juice to get that done. Yeah, she has got like I'll come back for one more, but strap in because it's because it's about weird. it's gonna get fucking Roseanne weird. <laughs> in we're here. gonna Roseanne the shit out of this, you guys. Um, let me ask you guys a question. Has there, do you think there's ever been a TV show or a movies that, that was real? (laughs) Do you mean like, like it was, I mean, I get like, I get that it's all like, that's Anthony Hopkins up there and he's just, 
he's reading words that like the HBO writer gave him to say, and he says so them, and he real. says them, he says them like really, really cool, and he says them like like sometimes he says them like really sad, like he is having the feelings that the words the person who like in the story would be saying the word, but like it's Anthony Hopkins just reading the words in a specific way, right? I'm not mm-hmm. fooled by Westworld, but maybe no. one of the shows is. Is one of the shows is a real show, yeah, or movie. If there was one show, Griffin, that you thought, what's the most likely suspect? Hmm. I mean, probably one where it's a thing that really does it, like Law and Order. Like there really are mm-hmm. cops and judges and stuff out there. But like, I don't know. That one's what been about running. Seinfeld. For- Seinfeld, I think, was probably. Well, again, it's hard to say because a lot of that was I, w- I would say I was down with that. But then there would be the segments of Seinfeld where he's doing stand up comedy. And it's like, but he really does do that. That one gets too confusing. I can't even start to unpack. That. I here's uh, here's what I'd like to pause it. I think that NCIS New Orleans starring Scott Bakula. Yes, is probably real because let me let me lay it out for you. You're Scott Bakula. You're a true professional, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You won't be on our podcast or on our TV show, but you're a professional. That only proves See you're a above. true professional. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> See above, true professional. <laughs> and you want to learn about cop work, right? So you're like, well, I better learn what an NCIS does or what that's about. I think it's something with crime or the military. New, co- have, new so- cops in the city. It, new cops in the sh- city with an S. <laughs> uh, and so you're going to learn all that cop shit, right? Yeah. You would probably occur to you that like, if we're going to be doing cop things already, chasing perps, tracking down clues, yes. hunting up the leads, if we're going to be doing all this cop shit already, right? Let's do it to Let's real just crime. Do it. Yeah. Let's just do it. You're filming it already, and I already am going to learn how to do it because I'm a consummate professional. Like, let's just do the crime and bust them. Let's bust the perps. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. There's too much crime in this city. Let's just start busting it a little bit. That's just like on Cops, I'm sure the inverse happened where they're like, this is supposed to be real. There are no crimes tonight. Can we all pretend to do a crime, please? Hey, can you call your cousin? They would just make a PA, get like really drunk and take their pants off and walk down the street and then film them arresting him. I have a theory for a show that is real and I'm still formulating the logistics of it. (laughs) Sounds like it's still percolating. It's still percolating because you can tell when I take pauses in my sentences like this, that's where I think my little thoughts to get it together. But I think the TV show that I know now, because I finished the thought, is real, uh, is Dinosaurs. <laughs> okay. Because here's, here's why. Here's let me, a list of reasons. First of all, there's, as far as I know, there's no actors. Mm-hmm. Only Dinosaurs. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Found footage. Um, the things that happened in dinosaurs, we didn't, we weren't there, right? Like people weren't there, so we it could have been happening. And then at the end of it, at the end of the at the end of the show, all the ice age happens, and that is that. Sorry, guys, but read a history book. That's how it happened. They deleted it, but every episode on the original broadcast, if you remember. Everyone used to begin with a very official looking scientist who said, I have been studying dinosaur fossils yeah. for my entire life. And as near as I can tell, this is how it went. <laughs> this is as near as I can put together from fossils. It will a little something but, but like this. Here's, but here's Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, nope, I've see? put together all the information I could about dinosaurs. Please to enjoy. If there was a character on dinosaurs who is just like a caveman played by Greg Kinnear, I would see that and be like, well, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. That's just Greg Kinnear. And he's got a beard on, and he's, but he's just reading what they told him to say. Dinosaurs didn't have that. It was all just dinosaurs without actors. Mm-hmm. So like without that, who knows? Is all, well, that's all want, I'm saying. Do you want to know a true, this is a shocking but true fact. Okay. Um, Family Matters is, of course, not real. It's uh, many actors performing no that's it. reginald Vell johnson he was in the die hard movie exactly but griffin did you know that what it is is a shot for shot remake of the winslow family home videos so while it's not the real footage they okay. just made a tv show based off of it but it is shot for shot line for line exactly the same of the winslow family yeah but they just had actors portray the winslow family i just went to IMDb to search for dinosaurs to find the names of the dinosaurs that played them in our real dinosaurs. 
And the lead story on IMDb is the Stranger Things cast in and out of costume. Hey, IMDb, that's disgusting. <laughs> They're children. Um, let's wrap up. What do you think? Yeah, yes. I'd love to do that. I really wanted to take some more time exploring Travis's theory that Family Matters is based on the home videos of a real family living in Chicago named the Winslows. Was well, there? Well, ex- we'll let the ex- message words fill all that in, Griffin. Excuse me. Did you realize that the mom on Dinosaurs was played by Jessica Walter of fucking Arrested Development Justin, and uh, Archer fame? You just fucking ruined it for me then, because she's not. What do you wait? And what no. do you mean? And what do you mean she played the dinosaur? What I'm saying is that she's been a dinosaur this whole time. I don't. That's mean. I think to say about she's she's absolutely perfect and wonderful. I and don't think dinosaur. it's cool to say she's, she's been a, a human-looking dinosaur. I think that's the actually kind of time. a busted thing to say. Maybe don't. Maybe we shouldn't espouse that. What? Okay. Well, so where did they go? That's a good question. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Guess I turned it around on you. <laughs> where did? Where did? No, Justin, that's a great point. Where did the dinosaurs <laughs> from dinosaurs go? Where'd they go? Why aren't they doing? Why aren't they doing more stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I saw Jurassic World, and there's that one scene, and you can just barely see Fat Dad Dinosaur in the background, <laughs> and he's got his little briefcase. I love it. <laughs> the flannel? Flannel Dad, yeah. I bet those dinosaurs every day, like, just cross their talons and hope for, like, a new Flintstones live action movie. I did see on BuzzFeed, you won't believe what the baby from Dinosaurs looks like today, and he had, like, the goatee and what all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that. The real shame was when um, Spiky had son dinosaur when he uh, robbed that liquor store and he went to Dino Jail. Yeah, where I he's guess out. he is. He's, he's out now. Call. He's totally that's clean. Good. It's worth knowing. That, it's worth noting that that's what Travis calls museums. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is better. This has been our show, my brother, my brother, me. We hope you've enjoyed yourself and had. This has, a, been, this has been an time. hour of us making, like, pretending, just doing make believe television talk for literally sixty two minutes. Hey, I've got a fun thing for you tomorrow. Uh, if you are a owner of the uh, PlayStation Four console, uh, we're in a video game. We're the uh, there's a game coming out on on PSN tomorrow called One Hundred Foot Robot Golf. It is uh, not just a VR game, although you can play it with PlayStation VR. It's also a regular-ass PS4 game, and it's a golf game with giant robots, and we're the commentators in the game. So if you want to play golf, but you want to have us saying uh, somewhat related things to the golf action on the screen... Sometimes. Then uh, that would be the one that you should get. Not any others. That's the one. It's also really, really fun. I got to play a little demo version of it. Super fun. Along with golf, your robot just like destroys a bunch of shit and has special moves, and it's it's ridiculously fun. I love it very much. Um, I want to thank uh, John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a really, really great song and a really good album. I, um, I've been putting together a Spotify playlist of like all the tunes I was bumping in college. I was feeling nostalgic for it. And uh, just like it's just it, it's basically I just added three long winters albums to a Spotify playlist and that's about it. It's a really good band. I hope everybody's tried listening to it already. Uh, I also want to thank Maximum Fun for having us on their network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and go listen to a bunch of really great shows. Uh, stuff like Beef and Dairy Network and Throwing Shade uh, and One Bad Mother. So many good shows all at MaximumFun.org. If you like the stuff we do, we have a ton of other podcasts and YouTube series. Uh, and you can find all of our contact info and all that stuff at macroyshows.com. Uh, well, I, I want to say thank you to everybody for listening. You know what I mean? Like, we appreciate all of you, and you're all great. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Christine Kelly, who sent in this final Yahoo. Uh, thank you, Christine. It's by Yahoo Answers user Cone, who asks... Can you please just admit that George Washington didn't exist? <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. My brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. (laughs) 
MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Are you easily confused by terms like cultural appropriation, cisgender, and woke? Or maybe you find yourself constantly explaining terms like these and you need a place to vent. Do you have a love for all things pop culture, social commentary, and politics? Sounds Sounds like like you you need need Minority Minority Corner. Corner. Where you can learn, laugh, and play. Sounds like Blue's Clues. Only it's more black, gay, and ladylike. James and Aneke will happily administer your weekly dose each and every Friday. You can listen on Maximum Fun or wherever you get your podcasts. Minority Corner. With the K. Because the C was taken. taken.